Campbell. There's no secret. There's no shortcut. Everything that is alive is conscious. Be silent. Be still and know God. Until you feel worthy, it ain't going to happen. Rigorous, ruthless, disciplined focus. You have to get to a place where you can work on yourself. If you are looking to live at the tip of the spear when it comes to health optimization, join my private membership group, Fully Optimized Health. Dot com and get the latest and greatest on hormone optimization, peptides, fitness, fat loss, and most importantly, raising your vibration. Again, go over to fullyoptimizedhealth.com and sign up today. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you may be around the world. I am Jay Campbell, and of course, you are watching the Jay Campbell podcast. And I'm very, very excited, privileged, humbled, and thrilled to be joined again by my good friend Dave Lee. Dave, is this your second time or third time on the podcast? Second time. We, I think we did last time at the start of last year. Remember? That's true. That's true. I mean, it's, time is a blur, but uh, so you guys, so Dave is a very accomplished Czech practitioner and a testosterone optimization coach. He works with people all over the world. He's also a very good lecturer. I mean, Dave is one of us. He is a what I would call a child of the light. He's a completely highly aware and awake He has cosmic awareness, um, and this conversation today is going to go in a lot of different ways. And the only thing I can say is that I just hope that you and I don't say something that triggers YouTube. But if they do, you know, the bottom line is because I'm doing it in this StreamYard platform, I have the raw file so we can do whatever we want with it. And as you know, bro, like, and we'll talk about this. I mean, human intelligence is so low at this point. I mean, people have been dumbed down in the last three to five years, you know, through the scamdemic. Uh, through social media, through the attention span now. I mean, the average, what, 20-year-old has a three-second attention span. I mean, I get these guys. I know they hit up you two every day, and they're like, hey, man, I, you know, I, I clip your you know, I clip your content. Eh. you know, And it's like, I'm like, dude, I have people doing it. And they're like, yeah, but you're not putting it out enough. I'm like, what are you fucking talking about? I put out one a day, and I put out a social media written piece a day. Oh, it's not enough. You got to do three or four videos a day. So it's like you hear them saying that, and then you're like, what has happened to the human intellect. It's so dumbed down, Dave. I mean, it's, it's insane, you know, where we find ourselves. And I I know we're going to go in a lot of different directions, but like, do you see this as all part of the technocratic overlords enslaving humanity? They want to get us just to a place where just people are not capable of critical thinking. 100%. I mean, critical thinking is the, I I was, I was so grateful that when I went to university in 2010, the first course that I did was a course on critical thinking. And we know that there is no fucking way they would teach that these days. So we must've been the last year they did it. But every week we would go and watch a lecture on some kind of uh, controversial topic. Let's say 9-11, euthanasia, like all these kind of different things. And at the end of the semester, the the task was to, was to form a pervasive argument on a controversial topic. So you basically got to sit down and, and have experts from all these different parts of the world come in and talk about different angles about different topics so that you could come to your own conclusion. So we were taught critical thinking. And like, it, I really think that it is something that has to be taught. Like I used to teach mindfulness meditation before um, I did this. That was my you know, nine to five job. And I, I feel like the biggest challenge that people had was sitting down in silence and meditating for even five or six minutes. They literally couldn't do it couldn't because do it. the attention span is so short. Um, and it's absolutely, I mean, my generation is screwed. The younger generation is completely and utterly annihilated. Um, I was fortunate. I didn't get broadband. Di- um, I, I was on dial up slow internet till I was 18. So I was, I was kind of shielded from it, um, in a way that I wasn't happy for at the time, but now looking back, I'm very fortunate, but pe- people are, it's, it's much easier to get people to comply with a narrative if they're afraid and if they can't pay attention, if they can't think for themselves. And I think that it is disturbing how many people are not even sentient these days in terms of being able to question the reality in front of their eyes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, dude, we can go so many different directions with this and I want to stay there. We are going to talk about hormone optimization and health optimization and where it's going. And, you know, we truly are in a golden age, as you know, right? Like we have bioregulators and peptides that can absolutely fundamentally treat and solve the root cause of people's issues. Now, if again, people are quote unquote, as we just said, intelligently enough, critical thinking and progressively, you know, oriented to take matters into their own hand. But at the same time, we also have like now this giant underbelly of humans, many of whom are your generation. And then I would call, I would say, you know, above that, the baby boomers who are completely entrained by technology, the baby boomers, it was the television and your generation, it's the web. 
And because of that, they don't have any critical thinking skills because, as you said, they've been trained to not have critical thinking skills. I mean, everything is a byword, a buzzword, a byline, a meme. There isn't an ability for these people to actually, quote unquote, self actualize, right? I mean, it's, dude, you know this because, you, you, you know, you're like me. I mean, you know, we are considered gurus now. And, you know, people want to just get the answer from us. It's like, it's like you you can respond to them on a on an Instagram or a text message or a fucking email or whatever it is, and it's like, read my article, listen to my podcast, read my book. Wh- what the fuck? And they're like, no, I don't I, I don't have time for that. I just want you to tell me the answer. I mean, I mean, th- this is where we are now. People don't want to take ownership for intellectualization for anything. They literally want the guru you know, the influencer, this person that they listen to, like you said, because they don't have any time to ever take personal, you know, mindfulness time. They're not meditating. They're not introspective. They're not sitting in nature. They're not contemplative. They're not creating. They're just consuming content from others, but they don't even think that it's like important for them to learn. It's just, what is the guy that I listen to? Is it Andrew Huberman? Is it Derek from more plates, more dates? You know, is it Peter Atia? You know, it's like, they don't even care to learn, bro. They just want to be told. We have this, we have this saying in, I, I used to work in digital marketing when I first finished university. And we have this saying in terms of, and one of the reasons I can't stand social media, I don't do the social media thing is because I, I worked on the back end of Facebook. I was the one who was making those ad funnels where we'd listen to your microphone and then we'd hit you with an, a, a warming sequence for six months before we would try to get you to subtly buy the product. Like, and the, the ROI was just ballistic. Like it just wrecked all other forms of media. It was so powerful. So that's why I don't do it. And, but we have this saying in marketing, which is like, you can lead a horse to water and you can't make it drink. And I feel like what's happening is you and I are, you know, we're, we're, we're writing these posts and we're writing these resources. And like, for any of my followers who are listening to this and you've never heard of Jay, go back and watch like all of the early Jay Campbell roundtable podcasts. They can't ago. Like, that's it's suppressed. Oh damn it! That, that that shit's like fuck, man. Like that that is like the the best content on TRT. Like the stuff with like you, Rob, um, the late Dr. Chris Luck, yes. Keith, like uh, Jim Meehan. All, all of those episodes were just so epic because like you guys just talked around the topic, so yep. it, it gave you these yep. points to to apply and think. But now people they don't want us to lead them to the water. They want us to be like, but how do I drink yes. the water when I get yes. there? Um, it's and it's like dude, that's that, that's your journey. Bro, I'm not kidding you. I don't share this with many people, but I can obviously share this with you. Um, the peptide situation is the biggest insanity ever, right? Because, it, again, we're smart guys, but we've been playing the game. I tell people this all the time. You know, they, they're, they'll, they'll, they'll message me and be like, I bought all your books. I've bought your courses. I, you know, I've, I, I listen to your podcast. I really love you, but I just spent $1,400 at Limitless. I bought your blah, blah, blah you know, fat loss stack and your healing stack. I really need some help on like how to do this. And I'm like, this is what I tell him. I swear to God. So I tell him, I said, look, man, don't take this the wrong way and don't be offended because I have no attachment to what I'm about to tell you. Um, And again, I'm not condemning you or judging you. This is just the way it is. I've been in the game. If you don't have 110 IQ, you're not gonna be able to use peptides. It's that simple. If you don't know how to reconstitute a peptide, if you don't know how to measure a microgram versus a milligram, if you don't understand how to do conversions, mathematical conversions, you know, with a calculator, because again, bro, if we break it down here, I mean, math is gone. No one understands math. I mean, that's not taught even, even that right. History and math have been removed. So it's like, I have to tell them that I'm like, look, man, I could literally get on a call with you, which cost you you know, if I give you a deal, it's 500 bucks, but I charge most people to talk to me for 45 minutes to an hour. And I usually will go over a grand said you, I could give you a deal for 500 bucks for an hour and tell you everything you quote unquote want to hear. And you still wouldn't have a fucking clue because it doesn't make sense to you because you're not where you have to be. Now I'm not saying that a 90 IQ person, which is probably the average person now, maybe it's less bro. Google IQ. I think they're saying it's 85. You know, I'm not saying you can't use peptides, but what I am saying is like, until you start doing the work, which is injecting yourself and fucking up, right? And hurting yourself because you don't know how to inject or you don't have a correct injection procedure. Again, the same shit that you and I had to learn on our own over time and experience and trials. And again, trials, trial and error, you know, tribulation, failure. 
it's like, you're not going to get there. Like, like, how do you think I can tell you something that took me myself four or five years of self-experiment to learn? And, and, and it's exactly, it goes to exactly what you just said. They want the answers and they want us to somehow like osmotically transfer what took us years to learn into their minds. It's fucking insanity, dude. Hundred percent, man. I mean, like the and it, it was so great to hear you talking about bioregul uh, bioregulators on Mind Pump. Um, yep. I was stoked when I was watching that because one of the main reasons I love being over here is um, there's a lot of Soviet medicine left behind in the Baltics. So, like for example, like if you walked outside and, and got into a car accident and it fucked your spine or you hit your head, if you got a good doctor, they would IV you like a hundred mil of cerebral lysine within exactly. the hour because they know they know that that will fix it. Like they know exactly. that it will cure this stuff. Um, I went to see a doctor here when I was having residual issue from this, this nerve damage in my brain. And he was like, IV, ALA and cerebral lysine. Why haven't you done that yet? And I was like, you're like, what? what? Um, and that, that was like my first thing I went down. And as soon as I did that, I was like, holy shit, like this is, this is an absolute game changer. And, um, <laughs> the, the bioregulators are this fascinating concept of medicine, but all these peptides that like, I mean, your website is absolutely fucking awesome for like learning about these things and gives you so much information, but like. People really need to understand that, like, th this, this, these are powerful medicines. These yeah. are powerful compounds, yes. and you know, and this is something which you know, I, I always give you credit when I talk about this topic because you, you've said it. You've got some prolific rants on your YouTube channel from years ago where you cover this in terms of um, inflammation being the root cause of, of all disease and, and yep. all diseases being metabolic in nature. And it, it's you know, when I speak and I use this analogy, when I go like, you know, taking all these peptides and putting it into a sick you know, out of shape, obese, just wrecked body. It's like value. taking all these super, super charged components for a car and then putting it into a car that's completely wrecked. What's going to happen? Value. You're going to rip out of the car yard and it's going to fall apart. Yeah, exactly. No, exactly, bro. I mean, I mean, you can't say it any better. And that's the problem. You know, it's, it goes back, you know, I just did a video of this this morning, you know, it goes back to like all the peptide based hair regrowth products. And there's, you know, a couple good ones now in the marketplace. You know, the newest one is Folatin which is of course Nick's, which is three to five times minimum more effective than Oxana was. And again, it's four angiogenic peptides in a synergistic blend. And it's a proprietary blend truthfully right now because he's patenting it. Right. So, I mean, you know, eventually it'll be, here's the exact ingredients, but you can't steal it motherfucker. And, and as you know, dude, that doesn't even matter anymore either. Cause the Chinese will manipulate you know. and steal your shit and they don't care about patent law. But, but the bottom line is, is that to what you just said is yes. Um, People have to understand that none of these agents are going to do absolutely jack shit unless you're first sleep optimized. You're not a giant dumpster fire, you know, insulin resistant, metabolically dysregulated, massive amounts of visceral body fat, which, as you know, is the most inflammatory substance known to man. Um, so it's like, you have to educate them. And, and so I have always done a good job of that. And again, it pisses people off, right? Because people don't want to hear guys like me and you telling them the truth to their face. It's, it's the whole Tom Cruise, Jack Nicholson conversation from a few good men 20 years ago. You don't, uh, I want the truth. You can't handle the fucking truth, motherfucker. Cause it's the truth. They don't want the truth. All these guys that have millions of people follow them, all normies, all NPCs. They don't want to have Dave Lee or Jay Campbell say, Peptides aren't going to work for you because you got a lot of belly fat. You need to lose belly fat, motherfucker. They don't want to hear that. So it's like, again, whether it's the dark AI blocking us, you know, impeding our message, and it's probably a combination of both, or it's just the algorithm saying, oh, these guys, these guys aren't playing the party line game, right? It's whatever it is. It doesn't matter. But like, we only have a small subset of people, bro, that are ever going to follow us because again, only people who are living in truth, who, let's just be honest, love and trust themselves are going to listen to people like us. The rest of them are just going to go after us. I mean, bro, like I'm now in a place where obviously, you know, similar to you, like I have so many people now that do follow me that are awesome people that when I get attacked on the internet, I usually just delete the message. Now, if you, you know, and then they're like, they, they come in, you know, in their passive aggressive tone and they'll be like, can I get a reason why my message was removed? You know, I mean, I'll let it sit there and simmer for like a three or four days or something like that. And I do have content teams on other social media that are doing it for me. But like with YouTube, I do it myself. And then I eventually will just delete it again <laughs> just to see, you know, to piss them off. But I mean, I don't have time, bro. Like on Instagram, 
with the blocking estrogen shit, you know, those Keith, uh, those seminal Keith videos that are making the rounds that I promote and spend like $300 a month, you know, to just get them out there, bro. I attack those people because I feel like until somebody bludgeons them enough, they're not going to get it. And, and as you know, dude, I mean, let's just be honest. You, you watched last night's podcast, you know, we were very honest and we said, look, we can't support this with, you know, autopsies or, or allopathic, you know, stamps of approval, but all the bodybuilders, everyone has died from high dose AIs. Now, again, it's not being attributed to their death, but as we know, they die of heart related pathologies. And they always say, well, it's because they were enhanced, bro. You and I both know that's bullshit. You can take a gram a week of whatever, if you're healthy and you're doing cardio and you're eating right and you're not taking recreational drugs and you're still sleeping, it won't do jack shit to you. Maybe you get a little bit of an enlarged heart, you know, Victor Black. I know you know Victor too. You know, he talks about these things. He's a great educator, but it's like, it's all controllable. These fucking guys are dying because they're literally taking three and four milligrams and sometimes double that of AIs a week to mitigate the water retention from you know three or four grams of shit plus insulin plus growth hormone plus god knows whatever the polypharmacy they're taking and nobody wants to talk about this and you know i'll i give credit to dave palumbo because he does bring me on a show and he will let me talk about this although he'll edit some of my stuff because i told him bro john meadows died from using an ai okay i know what he was using he was a good friend all these guys take these high dosages of this horrific women's breast cancer drug, which we talked about last night, which literally on the label tells women who take it for more than four or five years, which again is subscribed for stage three and stage four breast cancer. You better watch out for that bone mineral density. So imagine the men, bro. So the, even the bodybuilders, they're fucking like birds. They have like the skeletal reserves of like a stork. Giant behemoths, 275 pounds, 300 pound guys, you know, off season rip. I mean, uh, when they're in season, you know, 260, 270 shredded and off season 300, 310, they got the skeletal frameworks of pelicans. Like they're going to die. They've destroyed their vasculature architecture. They're every pump, you know, every aortic, you know, or capillary uh, network is blocked or occluded. They've got plaque. And, it, and it's from using these fucking AIs, dude. And it's like, at what point are these idiot doctors who now, as you know, I know you talk about this, they're putting it in the, in the goddamn testosterone solution. When are they going to be held accountable for what they're doing to their patient populations? Because it's not defendable anymore. The evidence is clear. Or in Australia, they're putting it in the fucking compounded cream as a Jesus topical. Jesus Christ. Yeah, there was a there was a great soundbite. I'm sure you're going to cut it up with Keith on on last night for you this morning for me the the podcast where and and I was talking about this the other day and and he some he, the words that he used were better than the words I used when I talked about it is that like the the argument that estrogen is bad for you when you look at these topics in men or these studies in men it's done on base like what he says baseline studies so they're done on studies where they're going we took a group of dudes. And the dudes with the high estrogen had all these problems. It's like, yeah, but what's causing them to have high estrogen at baseline when you fat, take out their testosterone? It's because they're fat. Right. It's because they're fat. And then all exactly. of these things that people are going, estrogen causes this in men. It's going, no, estrogen's a bystander, and being fat is what's causing that. And like when I first got into this game, like I was, you know, this was back when like um, you know, uh, Dr. Chrysler was talking about how, like, you know, we kind of want to use like a little bit of an AI. And like, so we were all using, like, I think I was using, I don't know, like 0.25 and estrogen twice a week or something. And I, I, as soon as you stop taking that, you stop feeling like shit. Like I, I felt legitimately on your podcast, I can't say on other people's podcasts, it's not PC, but like, I felt fucking retarded when I took that shit. And like, this is the thing that so like everyone thinks they're the one percent exception to the rule that is a genetic over aromatizer. I went through self decode with a fucking fine toothed comb. There is no genetic to be an over aromatizer. You right. are fat, and this is the whole thing. Like when I started this game, like you were talking about, like the importance of metformin fasting, and I was like, yeah, 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 whatever. Like that's only important if you want to look good with your shirt off. Blah blah blah. I'm good being a bit chunkier, and then over the years. If I take, and I say this all the time, like I speak to my friend Ellie Gilbert, like I know you know her. Yeah, I love And I her, say, yeah. I, I, 
I wouldn't have believed this if you told me this two years ago, but after working with thousands of men, if I put, if I take a hundred of my random guys and put them in response from who, from who feels better to who feels worse and put them in a line, it's fattest to leanest. Oh, hundred percent. The, the every, all of these YouTube channels are popular because they're going, what's the shortcut? What's the supplement? What's the, right, this right. that I can take and use your discount code and save 20% so that you get your affiliate cut. It's what all these guys need is to drop 5% body fat and it will fix all the problems right. that they're trying to add. hundred percent. So, so, I'm, so I love you. I mean, that's why you're on the show all the time, but like, I mean, the reality is, and this, and, and look, bro, you know, we talked about this last night, like you said, and I'm, and for the, People who don't know, we're talking about the round table. I, last night was the first reboot since 2019. And as you said earlier in the show, I mean, those episodes, those seminal episodes from like 2016 to 2000, I think it was really, it ended in 2018. I think that's when, you know, Jim and Keith had their falling out and then John died at the end of the year. And it, we all just kind of, kind of let the show go. It just kind of was like the right thing to do, but we always knew this was going to reboot. And again, to all of those guys, um, credit they are way more polished, right? Like they are, they know the science and the evidence to a T. I mean, Rob and Keith last night were just, I mean, dude, that was like, I mean, it was a master mm. course. It was, it was a dissertation. And, mm. you know, like you said, I mean, both of them had some amazing comments and now we have like, you know, Dr. Rudy Everwine and who's, you know, a younger guy. Um, but he's been in the game with younger guys. He also comes from a, a, a viewpoint of weight loss, right? Like he's been working with obese people. So he understands the inflammatory processes and the insulin resistance and everything that you were also say, talking about. But yeah, bro, like, I mean, it's not, it does, it's not rocket scientists. The best way you can live the longest is by being the leanest and being mm -hmm. the leanest year round, not being a big fucking dude who gets shredded for two weeks. And then it's 22% body fat year round. That's not living longest, right? Like you have to be, and, I, and I've been saying this a long time and, you know, Ali, I know talks about this too. I mean, like, cause they'll, they're going to ask us, well, what is the number? It's 10 to 15% year round for men. And it's 15 to 20% for women. Now women can go a little bit higher, especially if you had a child within the last month, because again, you're going to be holding on to more body fat because of maternal evolutionary biologic reasons. But at the end of the day, if you want to live the longest, and be the most functional, keep your body fat between 10 to 15% year round forever. Now, if you want to be a freak, you know, and you want to be like me and my wife and you keep your body fat like super ripped year round that, I mean, nobody, I don't talk about this, but you got to live in a place that's conducive to that. You're not going to live in fucking Siberia, you know, in cold weather areas where, you know, it's emotional based eating. We eat around each other, you know, just to get out of the cold. So you got to live in a place that's like, you know, very temperate weather wise, lots of sun, you know, because again, the body is always going to acclimate to its surroundings, to its environment, right? So in a, a warmer weather place, you can maintain lower levels of body fat. And again, I'm not saying that what I do should be, you know, the aspirational thing. I just do it because obviously I make money from appearing like this and maintaining this. And, and obviously I hold this lifestyle, but bro, truthfully, like I just had gyno surgery, you know, on this side and now I'm full removed of gyno for all my life. So I can now focus on training. I don't have to like, oh, I'm, you know, not doing this because I have pain. You know, I don't have to like worry about picking up my daughters or my, my pit bull. Right. So it's like, now I'm in this place of like, oh fuck, I'm going to really focus on my training for the, like the next year. So, I mean, I'm not going to be fucking six, 7% Jay Campbell. I'm probably going to be like 12% and work on my physique because I haven't had the ability to do this. Cause I've been dealing with gyno since 2016. You know what I'm saying? And like, now they've perfected the surgery. We could even talk about that if you want, but we should probably, because again, you know, that's what guys say. They're like, but bro, if I don't use this or if I don't take this Reloxifene or this Novadex or this, you know, CIRM, the guy no flares. And I'm like, no motherfucker. And again, I know you know this and I'm preaching to the choir, but it's like these guys, bro. And even the docs, they don't understand that gyno is genetic. You know, Keith talked about it last night. Like just because your nipples become sensitive when you go on exogenous testosterone doesn't mean you have gyno. It means that your body is basically leveling out, attempting to attain balance. Something you said that, you know, we, we've been this such an amazing conversation that I wanted to get back to because you set me up perfect for it is what we didn't know in the very beginning when the fat guys were taking testosterone was because as you know, you know, Chrysler used to talk about this. They're always injecting it in the belly, 
right? Most guys are afraid of injecting themselves. They're pussies. They don't want to inject IM. They don't want to inject up here. They don't want to inject up here. You know, it's hard because they're fat. They can't reach around, right? So they're injecting in the belly. Dave, you know this better than I do probably now because of so many people you talk to. That's a fucking cytokine storm for a guy that has belly fat. They're mm-hmm. literally injecting, and, and, and let's face it, right, depending on where they are, they're fucking injecting GMO irritants that's in the testosterone preparation right into the belly. And so they have all these side effects, which are labeled high estrogen side effects, which is, again, nipple sensitivity or you know a slight pain in the nipple area, or it's, again, imbalance of mood. It's Water retention. I mean, that's the number one side effect from fat guys with belly fat who inject into the belly. They get all this water retention because, dude, it's a goddamn biological inflammatory response to the testosterone coming into the belly. And no one was talking about this. And I mean, again, I just had to figure this out, you know, because it was always the high estrogen symptoms, the high estrogen symptoms. And it was like, no, dude. And again, you know, God rest his soul. Rest in power, John Chrysler, you know, that was one of his, you know, flaws. And he was, you know, at the very end, he admitted it, you know, and he was like, fuck, I'm learning as we go, you know, and because he was always like, just a little bit, we'll get rid of the water retention. And I understand that people want to modulate or quote unquote, alleviate symptoms and side effects. And so it was always the first round of like, well, let's take a medication. And if the medication works, then, you know, externally, It's good, but as you know, under the hood, it might not be. And you know, now we're talking, and we didn't do a good enough job on this yesterday. But, bro, DHT inhibitors. You know, I've had conversations with Ryan Smith recently. When people, when they get enough data from all the biological age testing companies, and now there's Genfinity, there's True Diagnostic, there's Glycan Age, there's going to be more, and they start pulling this together in the AI, bro. These people that have gone on DHT inhibitors for a long time, they're shortening their lifespan by fucking decades. It's the same thing with AIs. When you block or inhibit a natural biological pathway, again, a God-given pathway with a drug, it's robbing Peter to pay Paul that you are not going to get away with. It's like it's a karmic effect. At some point, you are going to pay that debt. And the DHT inhibitors are literally shortening the fucking telomeres on people. I mean, again, I just had this conversation with Ryan. He's like, man, I, I can't come public with that data because our data sets are not big enough. You know, the company's only two years old. But when we get a big enough data set and we can start cross-referencing the people who are using the uh, AIs and DHT inhibitors and are also, again, you know, hormonally optimized. And, and, and it, it, you don't need to be on therapeutic testosterone to show this. But, like, when they can start cross-matching all this data, bro, people are going to be mind blown because dude, as you know, and I'm sure these guys come after you too. When I talk about DHT inhibitors, you know, I get that guy is like, dude, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. I've been on a DHT inhibitor for 25 years and I've never had a single side effect. I'm fine sexually. I get raging wood. And so I always have to say back to them. I said, okay, great, man, go get a biological age test and let me know what, how it's looking for you. And not one yet has come back to me. And showed me their biological age test because, bro, I'm telling you, those guys, like I said, have robbed Peter to pay Paul and they have fucked up their DNA because those things are gnarly, bro. Gnarly. And if you're one of the unlucky guys, as you know, you may kill yourself. So I've known two people in my life, both from underground forums, who I never met in person, but I've had many conversations with them over five, seven years, who literally killed themselves from post finasteride syndrome which you know is not a myth anymore this is a very very you know established there are hundreds of thousands of men around the world that are that are dealing with this and i mean like i said in a worst case scenario you could take you know finasteride slash dutasteride even minoxidil if you're taking a really strong over the counter 3% preparation and 2 weeks later fucking kill yourself that is how gnarly these drugs are and yet dude they're just prescribed like fucking sticks of gum Dave, there are millions of women on DHT inhibitors. That's what's so insane for hair regrowth and, and hair loss stoppage. It's insanity. The, um, the, the DHT inhibitor stuff infuriates me for a number of reasons. Um, I can feel my blood pressure jacking up as we even talk about this. Um, 
I've, I've done a, a whole bunch of rebuttal videos, like reaction videos, where guys talk about the studies on on how that you know these DHC inhibitors are benign, and you actually open the studies and go through it, and it's like, my friend, you don't understand how to no, read literature. Don't. But no, they don't. The the thing that the thing that irritates me, we live in a world where gas lighting has become like second nature. I feel, and I've watched these videos. There's a company in a company in Australia uh, called Pilot, uh, which can go fuck themselves. And they do a lot of direct-to-consumer finasteride marketing on Facebook. And naturally, they yeah. sell you the ultimate combo of here's some finasteride and here's some Cialis. Um, <laughs> you know, you're going to need that, right? Um, the ultimate, ultimate combination. Um, and they'll even give these educational lectures. I think one's almost got a million views on YouTube where they say that the side effects will definitely stop if you stop taking the drug. Now, I, I don't – well, of course, these guys can get away with it because I openly feel, and I'm sure you'll agree on this, that it's the ultimate psyop to get men totally. to voluntarily crush the ultimate totally. androgenic masculinizing force in their body totally. for the sake of looking pretty. Like when I was in my band from 18 to 25, I used to dye my hair, straighten it. I was on stage singing, and I, I cried when I had to shave my head the first time, and then I fucking got over it. Um, yeah, exactly. It was, a, it was a rite of passage. Yeah. Um and the, the thing is, like, you can go on and read the Reuters article where they actually post the transcript from the court deposition where there was a class action filed from a whole bunch of guys who got PFS, and they sued the company. And the company openly says, you can read the transcript, and it says, were you aware of permanent side effects after cessation during the clinical trials? And they said yes, and they lost the trial. They had to do a payout. But the only thing they had to change was it, it, it changed on the package insert from side effects will resolve upon cessation the side effects may resolve upon cessation that's it and then people and it, it's like it's straight from the manufacturer's mouth like they lost the lawsuit and people are still saying oh the side effects are only one or two percent when you actually look at the that's proper the proper data yeah. it's more yeah. like 11 percent. and, and like bro, well, well, well to the 11 percent, and i want to stop you but as you know most of these people won't tell the truth they're gonna like get, and they're gonna get fucking dementia as well. Lie. Yes, it's like a badge of honor to lie and suffer with the side effects. These mm -hmm. motherfuckers will go down with the ship. They'll never admit they're suffering from doing it. Oh man, absolutely. And we're we're in a we're in a day and age where like I would hate to think the percentage of of people out there who are on or have been on for a considerable length of time DHT blockers, SSRIs, antipsychotics, or hormonal birth control. It's basically everyone. And then you take and add the V into that and. You know, you might have one or two people like us who might have missed all the bullets. Um, but the thing that blows my mind is that we go, okay, let's say it's 11% for acute side effects, but we know that because DHT and the metabolites of DHT and allopregnenolone and neurosteroids, these guys are going to get, we're going to get a massive influx of ADHD medication and these uh, these hair loss drugs that are going to cause early onset dementia, 100%. Yeah. Um, we just might not ever see the data. Um but it is it is terrifying to think what these people are doing to their their long term life trajectory yes. just for the sake of short term resolution of things that are just based around discomfort. Um, and, and, and by the way, only fifty percent of people actually have symptom resolution, i.e., less hair falling out. And let's just be honest, bro. And you know this. And even those fuckers can't lie about this. The reason Big Pharma loves the drugs is because it's one of those drugs where it's like, if you stop using it, all your hair falls out. Mm -hmm. That's my mm -hmm. number one education. When they message mm -hmm. me, okay, I, I understand it. I believe you. I've been lying. I do have sexual dysfunction. Without 30 milligrams of Cialis, I cannot get wood. I'm not interested in my wife. I mean, again, when you pry and they trust you, they'll start telling you the truth. Then, then it's like, okay, what do I do? How do I get off of it? And so I coach them night day. Three weeks of the angiogenic peptide based, separate with your, you know, whatever a DHT bullshit you're taking at night, and then eventually get your scalp health to a point where you can withdraw. But bro, if they withdraw in cold turkey, all their fucking hair falls out. So these guys who have been on them for a long time, they know. And so it's like, again, it's like what Keith was saying last night, the belief perseverance. Like I have to stay on it because if I don't stay on it, I lose all my hair. Think about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Keith had Keith had a, another great quote where he was talking about how like people you can't uneducate people on things that they've been taught that they are not can't true. Unlearn. Um, because there's they can't unlearn because there's this resistance there, and like I understand that because I remember when I was reluctant to unlearn a bunch of things. I was sure. just like a whole bunch of people. Everybody. I was convinced that I was the one percent that needed to take the AI, but then I looked around and realized, hang on, we all think we're the one percent, and yeah, maybe exactly. I just need to push this through. And I, I really think. 
when we look at the, the, the guys who are swearing black and blue from the AI thing, I understand <laughs> why they think they need it because they're looking at a situation and they're going, I don't feel like enough of a man. I'm taking a whole bunch of testosterone and I still don't feel masculine. And that means if I block the estrogen, I'm going to feel like more of a man. And like, I get that in terms of like how you arrived at that conclusion. It's wrong, but I get how you got there. And it's like what these guys need to understand is going, hey, man, you've spent your, your identity, your consciousness, your neuroarchitecture, everything in your body has built and adapted around this hormonal pseudo hermaphroditic state. And now you're going to have to go through a new puberty. And basically, you know, look yeah. at puberty. It's like, I often make the joke, I go, you're like the 12 year old who's hit puberty you know, six months ago and he's wondering why he doesn't have a full bush of pubes. Like, it's like you're, you're thinking that puberty is going to finish overnight and it's not. And it's like these guys need to understand is going, hey, you just started taking testosterone. You haven't looked after your body. Your identity and your consciousness is formed yeah. around fear from having low testosterone and going through a world knowing right. that you're not quite right. It's, going to, it's not going to take five or six months. It's going to take five or six years. Like I've been yeah. on it for almost seven years now. You've been on it for fucking ages. 20, and like, 22 years. <laughs> and, and you'd be able to say this better than me. Like when did the benefits of TRT stop kicking in? Like it wasn't within the first six months. It wasn't within the first year. It's, it's, no. a, it's a progression. The only thing you feel, for, and again, you have to tell the guys this because they're so destitute and so desperate. You feel the dopamine signaling if you're at the right dose within the first month, right? And that yeah. will get most of these guys who are desperate. Let's just be honest. They're desperate, bro. They're literally thinking about eating a gun, most of these people, right? And again, we, we mm -hmm. haven't even talked about that. I mean, you know, we started to get into that last night, but it's like, it's so prevalent. This is so ubiquitous. I mean, this is now a global phenomenon. Again, we know it's designed if we want to get into the aliens or the hybridization or whatever the fuck they're doing to emasculate the male species. I mean, you and I said this on our last podcast. I mean, it's it's clear if you have a fucking brain, if this is, you know, you're, you, you pull out your Hegelian dialect, why would you make the men weak? So they can't fight back when we get to the place where we ultimately want to go, which is like to enslave the human species, biobots, robots, transhumans, whatever the fuck it is. I mean, it's all going on around us. There's all these different timelines, but it's very clear that it's been always about decimating men, quote unquote, empowering women. But this is an inversion, right? Because women aren't, they don't need to be empowered. They need to be the creative divine feminine. They need to be the nurturer, the maternal woman, not the woman in the seat, you know, running the corporate business as a CEO. That's not what women were programmed to fucking do. I mean, this has been an ongoing attack on the male and female biological species functioning since at least bro, the seventies, right? Like once they figured out, they didn't have to send us off to the battlefield to slaughter us. They could just do it through chemicals, um, you know, through the food, through the water supply. I mean, bro, like we get really deep on this, like right now, like we are so the pineal for all of us is so encalcified. It's so closed over. And it's not just from this current life, bro. It's from the past lives. I mean, they started doing this to us, you know, at least 150 years ago. And so it's like, if you, I mean, this is like really latest and greatest, like super biohacking, you know, underground shit. You may have known this right now. Maybe you don't, but and I haven't done it yet because I'm in Mexico and I can't get a high enough dose of vitamin C. But if you get, I'm sorry, melatonin, if you get two to three grams of melatonin and mm. you take it right before you go to bed combined with pineolon, and I know you know what pineolon is, the bioregulator, which absolutely decalcifies the pineal gland. Bro, I'm hearing stories that you can legitimately go to sleep for 45 minutes and literally astral project be out of your body, total control. And again, here's the science, right? The science is the high dose melatonin is bathing the receptors in the pineal gland, which as a, as a physical being, you have had blocked from all of this fucking poisoning by these fucktards. And so now it's like, oh, I'm not blocked anymore. I have all this melatonin, which we already know what melatonin does. I mean, it's unbelievable. But I mean, again, this is a super high dose. I mean, you know, most people, Russell Ryder, who's like the leading melatonin doctor researcher in the world, you know, he takes like 400 milligrams. I'm talking two to three grams, right? And then combined with pineolon. But dude, I'm telling you, I've talked to a lot of people that have done this and they're like, no, you can absolutely do it. You don't even have to be a meditator. If you're a meditator and you're somebody that actually works on your internal game and connecting your higher self, it's even that much better. So my wife and I are super excited to get back to Florida and actually get bulk melatonin. 
you know, and do this. But I mean, again, dude, like it's so obvious. This has always been an attack on our divinity. This is a war between good and evil. And I know good and evil outside of the third dimension is a, you know, linear phrase, but let's just be honest. It's like, again, if you want to look at it as dark versus light, parasitic versus creative, whatever you want to call it, that's what is ongoing here. And it, you know, right now, bro, I would say that it's a, it's still a coin flip and who's going to win. I think like one thing that I really struggled to, um, I guess, integrate positively was when someone taught me and, he, and it was, it was a guy who was doing a stick and poke sleeve with me. And I spent about a month with him and he made, he made this fascinating point that completely rocked me. He goes, it doesn't matter if Satan exists or not, because if, if Satan doesn't exist, people will still die, sacrifice people to him. It doesn't that's matter. Right. Um, right. And yeah. that was the, that's the ultimate point in terms of people being like, well, if it is or isn't satanic, it doesn't matter if people are trying to do satanic shit. That's exactly um, right. And it's, it, it's, it's coming into a point now where, where it's influencing and corrupting the children directly. Yeah. And that's what disturbs me. Are you currently suffering from a testosterone deficiency? Are you already using therapeutic testosterone? If you are, go to tottdecoded.com forward slash 10 dash questions and find out the top 10 questions you need to be asking your doctor about therapeutic testosterone. These are critical questions to ask your doctor. If they can't answer them, you need to find another doctor. I mean, look, I'll just give you a person. I mean, I won't say share his name for confidentiality purposes, but I just did a consult with a guy who's very, very, he's famous in Germany. And he has not been able to get hormonally optimized because, bro, there's no way to do it unless you're connected in the underground. I mean, I was even talking to Dom. I know you know Dom, you know, the big bioidentical dentist in, in Germany. He's a good friend of mine. And I'm like, dude, how are you getting your shit? We just talked on WhatsApp this morning. Well, last night for me, morning for him. He's like, bro, I got a guy in South Africa that puts it in 10 milligram multi-dose vials and gets it to me, you know? So, I mean, like a guy like him has to fucking play the game, right? So this guy that I'm talking to was telling me like, and he's a naturopathic uh, philosopher and he's done all this stuff. He's built all these businesses. He's now a philanthropist, but bro, his life has fallen apart. He's had a testosterone deficiency for 10 years. Um, of course, he was on Androgel because that was all he could get in Germany. And they did it for six months. And he was like, dude, I felt like I was going to die. I already Whoa. felt like I was going to die. Right. Because it, it, as we know, it further inhibits you. So, I mean, it's like, you know, talking to this guy and realizing that there are literally nations in the world right now, first world nations, that still cannot even offer a solution. And the smartest people who know all about the, the benefits and, you know, therapeutic enhancements that testosterone will provide um, have to play the game underground. You know, there's no proper legal channels. I mean, like, I mean, I was blown away. I mean, I really thought when I was going to talk, when I talked to Dom, you know, again, last night morning for him, that he was going to tell me, oh yeah, bro, I got a doc. No problem. He doesn't even have a doc. They don't even have docs in Germany, bro. They got nothing. They got nothing in a fucking first world country like Germany. Right. So it's like, I, I had to email the guy this morning because we, we spoke on Tuesday and I was like, man, I'm so sorry. I usually get back to my people within a couple hours. And I said, bro, I promise you, I'm going to, I'm going to make good on what I told you. I'm going to find you somebody, but I'm, Right now I'm struggling. You know, I, I don't want to turn you over to the ampules and scoring. And, you know, that shit is an absolute archaic fucking insanity. I mean, like scoring a testosterone vial in the year 2023 for one shot is absolutely the most insane shit. I mean, God knows, bro, what's going in when you score the bottles. I mean, the glass breaks off, you get shards, you get injected. I mean, I don't even want to even think about that nonsense. But it's like I brought that all up because to make your point, I mean – there are certain places where still, how are they even going to get on what you and I are talking about without quote unquote going underground, which, you know, ne inevitably they have to do if they want to enjoy the benefits of what we're talking about. I mean, bro, that to me is what's mind blowing. Oh man, absolutely. We'll, we'll talk off air. I'll, I'll hook up your friend in Germany with a proper okay, doctor. We'll hook it up, but it's, it's, it's a hard thing, but yeah, yeah. I've got, I've got Europe sorted because over here in the Baltics, I mean, uh, uh, Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia, not only can you not like you, you couldn't even get TRT. I mean, you can buy a cerebral acid over the counter, which is great, but you you couldn't get fucking TRT yeah. up here. Um, yeah. But the other thing that you can't get, which is even harder to get, I think, than TRT, is it's fucking bioidentical progesterone for women. Right, like that's even impossible. And that's like 
you know, that, I, I look at that as the equivalent of the testosterone thing for men. It's like it's sapping their life force. Yeah, exactly. And um, it's it's devastating. And the thing that's so sad, and I mean, you probably get more guys than, than me, and it's, 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 it's why I wrote my book, and I feel like it's why you wrote your book, and I think you, you give your book away for free now, right? Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, and the I almost, I mean, I, I put... Agreed, the, the guys last night agreed off air to rewrite the book, right? Because we know the book is 80% probably. And again, you know, it's written in 2017, bit, came out, out 2018. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, like we know things change, you know, medicine evolves. Um, but like, I, you know, they were like, let's just rewrite it. You know, we'll all four be, you know, the authors. And I was like, no guys, you guys are not understanding technology. I'm like, we don't need to rewrite shit. We just need to do this thing for six months and it writes itself. It's a fucking transcript. And then you hire an editor, which I already have world-class guys. And then they just tweak the book and boom, we're done. And then we make your links in there. It becomes relevant and it's an amazing machine. But yeah, it's, uh, it, it, dude, I'm so grateful that I told you that story because I wasn't even thinking about that of asking you. But yeah, I was like, fuck, that's a solution. But yeah, dude, so it's like progesterone, testosterone, they're outlawing access to it. I know you know this because we talked about this before, I think via Instagram. I mean, Dr. Anthony J came on the fucking show and he said, when I was at the Mayo Clinic, and I was looking into getting testosterone power to do some studies. It was more difficult than fucking plutonium. Mm -hmm. It was like, they would not give me access to this. So, I mean, again, bro, what is the point of that? The point of this is very simple. There is a absolute conspiracy, call it a psyop, whatever you want to call it, to crush male and female biological sex. This is, a you know, this transmogrification of the DNA, again, biobots, transhumanism, whatever the fuck you want to call it, but they are destroying divinity, divine creation. Men and women are actual biological, you know, stuff, you know, 1200 levels of testosterone is probably average when a man is not being, you know, enslaved uh, biochemically. And, you know, women have high levels of progesterone and estrogen and are fucking feminine, and actually desire strong masculine essences. You know, now most men, as you know, I know you talk about this in your own stuff, but most men just opt out. I mean, I, you know, I said it last night on the show, 50% of men in Canada and the United States in the last two years haven't even had sex one time under the age of 30. So it's between 20 and 30, no sex. I mean, bro, how is that even possible? Yep. Oh man, a hundred percent. Like the, the, the thing that's fascinating going back to that, that idea of how hard it is to get testosterone. One of the things that people ask me all the time is being like, you know, that they, they work out that testosterone is the solution for their issues and they go, Oh, we have to, we have to get this out there. We have to tell people about this so that everyone understands. And it's like, they fucking understand it, dude. <laughs> and it's like the, the most important thing to note is like in, in psych, in, in psychology and psychiatry, Testosterone is the one molecule men less likely to follow rules in a clinical setting. Right. It makes them right. less uh, respondent to uh, operant conditioning. Right. Whereas SSRIs and serotonin increase your response to operant conditioning. Compliant. Like the, yes. That is the number one thing where, when people go, why is testosterone so hard to get? Because it stops you from following rules. That's exactly right. And if right. you can go, hey, I'm going to block my ultimate testosterone molecule to keep my hair. Because, you know, I think that if I'm not pretty, then society won't value me because they don't understand that a man's role comes from his capacity in terms of what he can do, not how pretty he looks. Um, it, it's it, now people can opt into it. It's, it's perfect. Um, and it's it's we're at a point where like and I'm, I'm so glad that you wrote your book. And one of the reasons I wrote my book and made it so cheap is that like I feel like if people buy your book, which is like the ultimate encyclopedia and then mine's like the Nobody little instruction can read manual my book now, bro, though, your, your, your book will sell way better now because, again, people won't read that. You and I my book's like, like this big and that. your book's like this. Yeah, 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 big. Yeah, no, yeah. But I mean, but, but you did the right thing. I mean, I, you know, I told the guys last night when we were talking about redoing the book, I'm like, it's going to be a compendium. It's just essentially like, look, this is what was wrong in the first book. We're not changing it. You got to fucking read it if you want to learn it all, but this is what we improved on and this is what the evidence shows now. But to what you were just saying, are you using therapeutic peptides? Are you a new user, maybe an advanced user? Maybe you're considering starting peptides. Highly recommend going to the link right below the peptidescourse.com forward slash 10 dash mistakes and download my PDF and learn what not to do before starting therapeutic peptides. And, you know, you're the guy that I'm going to bring this up with. And again, if this show gets deleted, bro, I'll give you the file. We'll clip it. 
Why do the scam artists, who, by the way, let's just call him out right now. He doesn't use fucking therapeutic testosterone. He's out there talking about Fagadocia and fucking Tonkat Ali and all of these fucking things he talks about to increase testosterone. It's an absolute scam. You know, obviously, Derek is coarse geared up, but, you know, and he works for Merrick. So, I mean, I know he doesn't really have a, a, a fence in the game, but he sells fucking Turkestra. Okay. And, you know, Victor has been on Instagram calling him out, showing the cost of Turkesterone at Alibaba. It's like $4. And then Gorilla Mind, whatever the fuck supplement that he sells is $70 or $69.99. You know, I mean, and he's so, so I mean, again, they're fleecing. And by the way, just so you know, dude, Huberman and Derek are connected. I know that. So they're making money on lying and, fe- and fleecing young, impressionable people. So why, and, and again, I want your comment on this and I want to just beat this to, to, to the end. Like I, like I want this to be the final on this. Why do these motherfuckers continue to push testosterone boosters when we know that they do nothing, when we know that the evidence, all of the scientific evidence shows that anything that is shown is a transient bump. It's not an optimized level. It's very rarely ever affecting free testosterone. Yes, we know that Tom Ali increases libido. That has nothing to do with optimizing your hormonal levels of testosterone or free testosterone or total testosterone or estradiol or progesterone or any of it, or, or, or even thyroid. Why do they not go away? Is it again, because people's IQ is just so low and they just keep resurfacing. I mean, it's kind of like SARMs. I mean, I mean, is that what's going on? Because this is what drives me crazy because bro, people today have access to you and me. They have access to other smart people out there that are talking about this. Why do testosterone boosting supplements not go away? I think from a marketing standpoint, they tick the box of being too good to be true. And I think that it's like a, um, I, I think that now things like Tongat Ali and Fadoja are marketed how Psalms used to be marketed, which is like, here's all the benefits of testosterone without all the side effects of testosterone. And the problem is, and this is the thing that I keep coming back to, like, and I, I don't, I, I'm sure it is legal to sell Fadoja, but it shouldn't be legal. It's not legal to sell it in Australia. People that um, take its hair because, falls out. It causes more well, side effects than it even does anything. It, it's a Nigerian shrub that has zero studies in humans. Like, I, I, it, for me personally, I wouldn't ethically be able to promote the no. doja, even if I thought it was, if, even if I thought it was effective for doing what it does, which I don't think it is. But let's say I did, I wouldn't be comfortable selling this without going, hey, just FYI, this has never been studied in humans. Right. So we don't know what it's going to do to your liver. We don't know what it's going to do to your kidneys. We don't know right. what it's going to do to your intestinal tract. Um, and all of these things, like, this is the thing that scares me for these people is they're going to take these because they trust the people who are selling them. And, you know, I hope it all works out for everyone. Okay. But like, I'm concerned as what this is going to do people long term. And, and what I tell the people, because one of the ultimate things with testosterone in terms of a hesitancy to go on, and it, it, it's a valid one to have is being like, okay, once I go on TRT, I'm going to shut down my natural production. I'm going to be dependent on this thing for life. Okay. Right. I understand that. But if you're hypergonadal when your testosterone levels suck, and then you do TRT, it doesn't work out for you and come off, you might lose 10% of terrible. So if you go from shit to slightly more shit, it's not really going to be that much worse. So if you're in a situation where you need testosterone, for me, I'm like, well, if we take all the marketing out of it, just looking at it from a a logical biochemical perspective, the the Fedoja and Tongat Ali aren't going to permanently boost your testosterone when you stop taking them. So which one would you rather be dependent on? The bioidentical testosterone, which ideally you can get it made in a high quality cream or like I use MCT oil for my clients because sure. of GMO seed oil shit. Yep. Um, or would you rather be dependent on another product which someone is selling to you, which hasn't been tested in humans? We know, I mean, you're the one who says Tongat Ali is a phytoandrogen. It increases free testosterone, but it doesn't increase LH. Where's the testosterone coming from? It's a phytoandrogen. Um we, we don't know what these things are going to do to these people long term, but we know what testosterone is going to do because it's been studied exactly. in humans. The only years. people who I, I believe, 100%, and I, I don't like, the, no one who's promoting testosterone boosters can prescribe testosterone. And I think that it's, it just comes down to money. And I think that I, I really hope that everyone who takes these products is going to be okay, fingers crossed. But the big thing that people need to understand is that just because something is natural and herbal doesn't mean that it's safe. Yeah, I mean, exactly, dude. I mean, that's fucking, I can't, 
Awesome. I mean, everything you said. I mean, dude, well, so in real world use, and you know, you and I have talked to hundreds, if not thousands of guys probably combined who have come to us and said, man, I did that. I listened to Andrew Huberman and Derek and I bought all that shit and I tried it for six months and my fucking hair fell out or I got nothing. Uh, I felt worse, you know, if anything, I mean, again, you know, this, I mean, Daniel Kelly and I did deep research in 2016 and 2017 and we wrote the chapter on, you know, testosterone boosters. And we, at that, even then there was plenty of fucking peer review that showed they did nothing. They literally do nothing. They, I mean, the only thing that we probably know they do is take money out of the bank accounts of men who use them. That's pretty much it. I mean, there is literally no value. Uh, true story. Dave Asprey, there's another one, was talking about testosterone boosters back in 2013 or 2014. And again, I sorry guys, I don't remember what year it was. And this was in metal, which is just you know very elite men's group uh, in West LA when I lived in Southern California way back then. And Mike Cernovich and I were in this group, and I, it was the very first day. I mean, again, you know, there's no, synch- I mean, no coincidence. There's only synchronicities in the universe. But the very first show that I attended, or, or, or um, uh, you know, a weekly event that I attended, they, they did them on Saturday morning. It was in Westwood, and it really was a who's who of men. There were all sorts of like captains of industry and you know Hollywood elites. And Dave Asprey is the featured speaker. And again, it's either 2013 or 2014. I don't remember. And when you got invited to this as a newbie, you had to do this thing with Ken, the host, who's now a good friend of mine, where it was like, hey, what makes you special? And, you know, guys would say like, well, I had sex with four girls, you know, 10 years ago and like the story, you know, you know, and then the clowns would be like, well, you know, I'm a biotech wizard and you're, you know, my my business and this is so much money I make. Right. So it was always kind of like, dude, we don't care, but just tell us something that makes us laugh. So anyway, Osprey's up on the stage and bro, he's talking about testosterone and phagadocia, you know, I mean, it was, it, it was insane. And, you know, nobody knows me and I'm just sitting there and I'm already in deep in the research, right? I'm two years out from writing the TRT manual. And by the way, they asked me when, when Ken asked me what makes you cool, you know, I said something that made me cool. And then he was like, well, what's your aspiration? He's like, I'm like, I'm writing the world's greatest book in the history. I, I literally said to him, I said, I'm writing the greatest book in the history of the world on how to use therapeutic testosterone uh, for lifelong health and happiness. I swear to God, I said that to him right then and there. And, and so that's proof that we do manifest and create our reality. But I listened to him speak. He spoke for like 30 minutes. And then I was like that guy. And he called me. And dude, I fucking disemboweled him. Dude. The entire auditorium, there was like 600 people, 550 people, whatever, in this auditorium in Westwood and in, in West LA. You know, all the attention went from Dave on stage to like, who the fuck is this guy? Right. And so it's like, I knew at that point that most of these guys with the name were not real. Tortoises on top of lampposts put there. And because he had no rebuttal, he knew nothing about testosterone. I mean, again, even Ken came up to me later that day and he was like, you and me need to talk. You know, he's like, I'm looking for somebody who can really help me, you know, optimize my physical health. And he's like, you might be the guy to do that. Right. And obviously, you know, I mean, I'm impressive physically, especially compared to, you know, most average guys. So, you know, it it helps to walk the talk. Right. But like, it, it was like at that moment in time, I knew that most of these guys were fucking frauds. I mean, bro, Dave Asprey doesn't know jack shit. I mean, I'm being nice when I say that. He was literally a guy who was in Silicon Valley at the right place at the right time, and they just positioned him as this the biohacker guy. But I mean, he is absolutely a farce. There is not anything he's an expert on. And 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 he's what? He's probably still known as the world's top biohacker. You know, For a prime example, pounds of shit in a 120 pound bag. I mean, it's like, get the fuck out of here, dude. But like, it was at that point that I really did manifest my destiny. Cause I was like, wait a minute, this guy doesn't even know what he's talking about. And he's this famous quote unquote biohacker. I'm going to write the best book ever. And sure enough, you know, the TRT manual came out a year and a half later. And then three and a half years later, we are four years from that moment. I wrote the TOT Bible. So, I mean, we do create our reality and maybe we could even just finish you know, this podcast just talking about, you know, solutions and, you know, where it's going. I, I, I do, I do want to ask you just, you know, just to give your take, because I know you're very advanced. It's like, what do you see over the next two to three years 
how this evolves as far as like health optimization. Like, are we just two separate divergent species timelines of, you know, call us the, you know, the resonance where we're like using bioregulators, we're using peptides, we're using growth hormone. We're obviously advancing our delivery systems with testosterone and then the fucking sheep, the NPCs, whatever you want to call them, just all plug into the metaverse, become giant, fat, disgusting blobs. Um, is that, is that, do you see how this is where that's going? Or do you think that there will be more of a merging? No, I think there's going to be a separation. I saw that on the yeah. same day that Facebook announced those uh, new advanced VR, not Facebook, right. uh, Apple announced those new advanced headsets. Yep. Uh, Australia announced like the 11th uh, interest rate hike in a row. Um, and to me, I was like, this is the perfect, don't worry about your reality becoming screwed. You know, the metaverse right. will be cool. Right. 4K, you know, right. whatever. Universal um, basic income in the metaverse for everybody. Mm. Yeah, uh, but I, th I think the amazing thing is, like you know, when we look at like what you and I and everyone else is talking about now with you know hormone optimization versus like you know when you wrote like I remember listening to the first the first version like the T the T the TRT manual TRT the short manual. version yeah 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 I remember listening to the audio book sitting there with my first uh, eighteen gauge inch and a half uh, two fifty oh, shot of Prima test and about to jab it into my quad just fucking trembling being like oh, shit am I going to do this going to do this. But if we look at how far like this space has come in this short space of time, I mean, like if we look at, you know, that space of time again, you know, five, 10 years in the future, I think that, I, I think that, I, I think we're really starting to nail this hormone optimization. And, and for my approach, which I've been talking a lot about with guys regularly is, and it, it comes from, you know, my two biggest influences in, in how I practice is yourself and Paul Check, you, um, and, and Paul Check in terms of the, I love the theory Paul, of being like, yeah. Paul's a gangster, and you guys—you guys have so much in common in terms of the Spiritual understanding gangster. of, yeah. Oh, I mean, and it's—it's it's human engineering, and then it's—it's it's the it's the understanding that we are conscious of the vessel that we drive. So it's this. Paul has this concept of of the human body being a series of interconnected systems, and when you take that concept and you understand the human body like a car that is self aware, right. and then you look at the application of being like, well, how do you? lever bioidentical compounds or bioidentical signaling molecules like peptides to get to where you need to go, it becomes this hybridized approach, which I've been pushing of basically being like, these are the interventions that you need to make, the foundations yeah. that you need to lay. And then yeah. to build the house on top, it's about, and this is what I've been saying recently, and it's to quote Wes Watson, um, do all the things you know you should be doing and stop doing all the shit you know you shouldn't be doing. And if you right. do that stuff, and if you don't know what those things are, that's cool. If you don't know what macros are, if you don't know, like, the importance of sleep, mobility, training, all that kind of stuff. Like that's cool. Learn those things from someone like us and then go and practice them. And if you can do those, but you have to do both. And like I put up this post the other day being like, you have to do the self-work in terms of psychology. Absolutely. You have to manage your finances. You have to do the fitness. You have to do the nutrition. You have to, like everyone's trying to get away with one or two things and then go harder into one or two things to compensate. It doesn't fucking work. Um, and if you can, I think, what I've observed in, in my work with guys, which is why I love working with men, is that they'll try, they'll ignore me, they'll try and do it their way, and then it won't work, they'll hit a wall, and they'll come back and they'll go, fuck, you were right. And then they'll go and do all these things, all these practices that they have to do to reach this elevated state of consciousness, because if your vessel is sick, you know, we have this symbiotic relationship with the consciousness and the vessel, where if the vessel's sick, the mind becomes sick, because you're Absolutely. observing your internal and external. So if you can understand and go, hang on, if I feel like shit, maybe it's because my physical health is fucked. And I may not understand that if I fix all the tension in my right hip, then that will get rid of my anxiety. But I know that this is a problem and this is a problem. I don't know how to fix this, but I know how to fix this. So I'm going to fix this first. And if you can approach it like that and look at yourself as something that needs to be re-engineered, and then I, I feel like maybe it's just because I'm in the middle of it, but I feel like people are starting to really accept this message now of, of the stuff that you've been talking about, which is like, Hey, you can't be sick and inflamed and be happy. It doesn't fucking work. It's um, absolutely true. You can't, you can't do it. Like you can take all the fucking supplements and fucking medications and nootropics and whatever. But if you're inflamed and you've got a whole bunch of visceral fat, it's like you can get all the driving lessons in the world, but if your car's a piece of shit, you're not going to be outperform the good drivers in the good car. So you have to be a good driver and you have to have a good car. And I feel like people are starting to get that on our side, but on the other side, you know, people are not eating meat anymore. People are eating so much artificial shit. They're vaping. They're not going vaping. outside. Oh, my God. Um, That's a whole podcast, vaping. Dude, to what you just said, beautiful. But I have to I have to drill down even deeper. I mean, because, I mean, now we're real in real talk. How do I say this without sounding like a fucking fat hater? 
Bro, fat people have no connection to spirit. Because of what you yeah. literally just said, how can you be connected to spirit, to the downloads of the source consciousness field, to God, to all that is, universal consciousness, whatever you want to call it, whatever your spiritual inclination is, when, as you said, you are in 24-7, 365 cytokine storms. You feel like shit all the time. You wake up in the morning and you literally look in the mirror after you get out of bed, which you haven't slept at all because you can't fucking sleep because your body is literally in a gigantic heightened state of fight or flight. It's like this gigantic circle of cortisol. And then you look at yourself and you're like, fuck, I don't want to be me. I mean, bro, I've had some very, very powerful spiritual mentors tell me that people that are obese, you know, again, insulin resistant, dysregulated metabolically are literally just harboring so much soul trauma from not only their current life, but their past lives. And it's literally bro layered on top of each other. And that's why their meat suit has all these flesh, you know, just call them rolls on top because it's so much trauma that they have not been able to let go. And so it's like, I'm so glad that you brought that up in the way you brought that up because I don't really get a chance to talk about this. And I know we're going to get attacked for what I just said, right? Because I mean, I basically just said that fat people can't be truly spiritual and they can't, they're not connected. They can go to church on Sundays, but that's not fucking spiritual. I mean, you cannot be in the divine energy of source when you are, like you said, in abject suffering. How is that possible as a human? It's not. Now, I mean, I know people will come and they'll say, yeah, but Jay, how do you know that's not their karmic that, or that's their karmic burden, that they're paying off, you know, past life stuff by suffering in this life. And, you know, and I will say, you know what, man, maybe there's a possibility of that. But again, why would a human choose that? Why would a human who has, again, the master creator of their reality choose to suffer? You see what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, we're talking real talk right now, but it's like, yes, you cannot be connected when you are that dysregulated. It's not possible. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's completely true. I used to teach meditation. I used to do guided meditations uh, once a week in addition to running these workshops. And the, the physically healthy people were able to reach a state of meditation and right. the physically unhealthy people were not. And right. I, I was fascinated by this. Like I got into endocrinology mm -hmm. because I dropped out of psychiatry because I was trying to understand how the brain worked. I realized psychiatry was not uh, that course at all. It's how to drug people. But when you look at like, and, and it was, it was your stuff on inflammation that got me into this. Like one of the most fascinating things is like, when you look at what inflammation does to neurochemistry, like chronic inflammation will reduce the production of dopamine it will increase the reuptake of dopamine, dopamine exactly. and it will reduce the binding of dopamine it is literally a depressant and it stops you from being able to focus and it's like i, I and i used to like i used to be you know when i was younger i was overweight and then i got very skinny sure. and then i kind of you know did different things with like body types and so forth but it, it's so important that people understand that like being lean and physically healthy isn't narcissistic and it isn't just no. for the aesthetics. It, it's, it's the fact that like, as I was saying before, like I truly believe the consciousness, the, the experience that we are having as subjective beings is not just in the brain. It's coming from every single cell in the body. 100%. So if, and it's, you have to be physically and psychologically in alignment with your purpose and your health physically to be able to feel the way you want to feel mentally. And I, I always tell people, I go, you know, generalized anxiety disorder, which is one of the biggest fasters in modern medicine, is one of two things. It's unintegrated psychological trauma, which people can generally work out and go, oh, yeah, that's what I'm afraid of. You know, learned fear. Or it's your brain flashing that check engine service light because, going, because problem, problem, stomach, problem, problem. Because their gut, their gut is inflamed. That's it. Gut is inflamed. Yeah, they've got it, bro. You just nailed it. You got if you got a bulging disc in your back, you can't. You're going to have anxiety because you're going to be constantly increasing cortisol, and then you're going to be increasing adrenaline. You're going to be reducing thyroid hormone. Right. You're going to be creating like what you refer to as you know this this metabolic dysfunction driving inflammation, and then your consciousness is going to be experiencing that in real time. Right, it's, you're going to be intoxicated by poison. That's and exactly right. That's why I tell it's like, and that's why like you know the yogis have known this for a long time. Like I tell people, I go. 
one of the best things for your mental health is don't just go and do yoga, get good at yoga. If you're good yes. at yoga, yes. you will feel better mentally yeah. because your physical body is one of the biggest areas of pain and dysfunction. So if you reduce your body fat, if you improve your mobility, if you stop putting shit into your body and put good quality nutrition in there, and then you spend time in nature, you self-develop, you find yeah. a purpose in the world, you go out and do all this shit, and then if you fix your hormones, if they're too far gone and you can't fix it naturally, then you use the you know, interventional endocrinology as you refer to it. If you do all those things, you'll get to where you want to go. But if you don't do those things, you won't get to where you want to go. Dude, genius. That's, that's a whole clip right there. But uh, 80% of the world right now is in the quote unquote weak force, red root chakra, you know, apathy, guilt, despair, blame, shame, humiliation. And again, all goes back to, I wrote this in my email yesterday. Do you love and trust yourself? You know, I, I encourage you when you're working with men, because ever since I started doing this two years ago, it's profoundly impacted my my business and also my my relationship building. But with men, this is a question that very few of us ever really delve into. Because as I said in my email yesterday, you know, the two answers that you get if you ask a man, I gotta ask you, bro. You know, and this is successful guys, right? Like, do you love and trust yourself? And they'll be like, bro, I love my wife, I love my kids, I love my job. They never can answer the question. The men who truly love and trust themselves will answer the question and be like, yeah, you know, I spend a lot of time in nature. You know, I have a meditative practice. So yes, I absolutely do focus. And, you know, I always like to use the, because again, society always gives us ciphers and clues, but why do they tell you on the airplane that you have to put your mask on? yourself and not your kids or your wife, right? I mean, they're always telling us. It's like this universal edicts of like, we're letting you know what's really important, but are you able to discern, right? So it's like, until any of us, each of us, all of us, men or women, doesn't matter, but we're talking about guys right now, truly learn to love and trust ourselves, to feel worthy of having a, a improved body of worthy of injecting testosterone, worthy of using peptides or growth hormone or bioregulators, worthy of going to the gym and changing our body composition. Dude, you and I can talk to her blue in the face. We can give them every feature and benefit, every scientific, you know, tangential, uh, tangential study or, you know, peer review comment. And it means nothing because they truly don't look in the mirror and feel worthy of making change. And so it's like, if we can teach that first and foremost, now when we're coaching our clients and talking to our clients, bro, that's when we become game changers. And that's, again, you and I are both children of the light, but it's like, I didn't learn that. And I got to give my wife credit, you know, for telling me that because she would say that to me. She's like, you know, dude, you're a fucking scientist and you're smart and you know all these things, but like these fucking people don't hear a goddamn word you're saying until they actually believe that they're worthy of hearing it. And so that was like the light coming on moment, you know, like three or four years ago, but I still wasn't able to incorporate it into my coaching and my teachings like I, I can now. But it's like, bro, once you get that force field of them down, and, and as you know, dude, a lot of guys are haughty and, you know, egoic and, you know, like they, they just resist, right? When you say that, because they don't want to say, of course, I love and trust myself, bro, because they really don't, right? I mean, like, and you and I both know that we're conditioned in this world to not love and trust ourselves. You know, we're taught at an early age to adopt some bullshit religion, political structure. Uh, we're taught to be lack limitation and scarcity with finances, you know, save for a rainy day. You know, you, 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 we don't we, we can't afford that. I mean, all of this shit that is embedded in our consciousness, which is, of course, as you said already, you know, psychogenic trauma layers like until we can actually think and discern for ourselves that like, no. I don't have to aspire to any of that. You know, I can choose to work on my inner self, to be contemplative, to be in meditation, to go into nature, to read spiritual books, to read the ancient texts. I don't have to, 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 to buy into that. But bro, again, as you were saying, they, again, call them the dark side, whatever, the, the parasitic energies, they have realized now that the only way they could stop this consciousness from rising, because it is happening, was to entrain people through the environmental contamination. You know, again, food, air, water, plastics, everything, you know, endocrine disrupting chemicals. And so as they've done more of that, they've taken people further and further away of love and trust of self. Because again, they're not capable 
of being introspective. And this is going back to the beginning of this conversation, you know, when we were talking about how these people just want us to tell them everything. They want us to, to make them drink. You know, it's, it's like you said, it's skipping the step of leading them to where they need to go. It's now like, I don't care. I need you like to actually do it all. And, and, and all of this has come from this, again, derangement of our natural, you know, call it God-given environment that, you know, we used to be able to just learn from, you know, nature and going out into nature, from playing in nature, from being in the energy of nature, which is, again, what I like to call God consciousness source field. Bro, kids don't go outside. They're fucking on their computers. They're playing video games. They're on their, like you said, the goggles. I mean, it's just, everything is just so off. And so all you have to do is just make a choice to opt out of all of their bullshit, which is again, constantly being thrust upon you. And again, you know, I'll just, you get the final statement, but I'll just say it's really simple. You know, in my spiritual uh, show that I do called the living in residence show every week, uh, I say you have to be in this earth, which is creative or they got you where they want you, which is of this earth, which is consumptive. So when you're in this planet, in this third dimension, it's like, hey, I know I so at a soul level, I consented to be here, but I don't have to be opted into their bullshit. I can just be creating and iterating and, and loving and, and learning to love and trust myself. And then when I am that, I emulate that as an energy field to everybody that I come into contact with, right? So then, you know, and I know you're doing this now and I'm doing this now too, but like when we serve, it's not just one person because that one person now goes out into the field and that that person elevated is elevating other people. So that's, that's all you have to do. But if you're not creating, and again, you know, I kind of almost liken this now to like what you and I do as entrepreneurs versus the people that just check into the bug men places, like and clock in and clock out. I mean, what are they creating? I mean, they're being told what to do. They're, you know, in a cubicle, most likely following someone else's schedule to take a shit. They got to ask permission. You know what I mean? So it's like you, you as an individual, if you're watching the show today, you now have the Internet, which completely blocks or, or, or gives you an unlimited world and access to abundance, but only when you think you have the access to the abundance, right? And how many people are still disillusioned? They're like, bro, I can't leave LA. I can't leave New York. I can't leave my job. It's all I know. I mean, I make $150,000 a year. What would I do? You know, it's like you're limited only by what you tell yourself, the self-talk and the negative story that this is where all you have in that sandbox, in that little confined space, if you can tell yourself something different, and again, it comes down to loving and trusting yourself. When you love and trust yourself, you don't give a fuck. You're courageous. You're going to take a chance. You're going to lift out of that box. You're going to go on your own. And as you know, from entropy comes creation. All you have to do is just fucking move. And the amount of you know new creative energy that comes into your life in the you know in the form of opportunities for you know income or, you know, job advancement or anything, even health improvement. I mean, dude, it's insane and it never fails. But again, you have to have the courage to do it. As you know, the low testosterone people can't do anything. They're fucking immobilized. Dude, that, that, that's so much good shit. This is like my favorite thing to talk about. I was so, um, it was such a privilege recently to talk to, to Dr. Rudy and, and do a podcast in terms of the cross section we talked about between uh, testosterone and psychedelics and, and you know, spiritual health, which is sure. what this is about. Um, and it's, it's fascinating that you said, you know, that you ask people if they love and trust themselves. And, and it's, um, one thing I, I recently did a lecture on at the Silverback event was I said, one of the most important things that men can do is be proud of themselves, but you exactly. actually have to have a legitimate reason to be proud of yourself. You have to <laughs> earn that. You can't just sit there and go, Oh, I'm proud of myself because I got up and went to work and you know, <laughs> didn't, didn't have an emotional breakdown and, and made my bed. It's like, no, you actually right. need to be proud of yourself. And it's, it's so important. And I think that one of the biggest psyops was that we are taught that we are um, worthy of love, but we are not taught the importance of how to love other people. Right. Um, because it, it, we expect it, but we don't think that we should have to give it and we don't know how to give it. And I think that these, these areas are, are so important that people look at and learn to address because they're not going to be things that come naturally. And, and what you spoke about, this idea of you know movement creates energy, which creates 
you know, this, this abundance mindset and this capacity to do, I often tell guys, I go like, you know, and when we were speaking about before, you know, obesity, like th these are often things that people like, it's uncomfortable for people to hear that. And totally. it's good to be uncomfortable. I often ask people who are obese, yeah. I go, how did you get so fat? Like, how did this happen? Um, and I, I'm not giving them shit. I'm like, I'm like, I really want to understand, like, yeah. how did you get so far off the path right. so that we can work out how to get you back on it? Because the hardest thing in these guys' journey is moving back towards the path where they're so far off it. But it's so important that there has there has to be a feeling of discomfort. Right. But there also has to be like I often, like I love working with guys on this stuff because I go like, hey man, like I, I honor your struggle and I, I hear that you're not doing well, but the ball's landed where it's landed and you exactly. gotta fucking play it anyway. And yeah. we all have to as well. And I think that like when there's that level of like male accountability, camaraderie, inspiration, and also what you mentioned, like bravery. Like I, I tell guys, I'm like, you have to be courageous and brave. You have yes. to, you have to make the choice to push outside your comfort zone for the sake of pushing outside your comfort zone, because all the good shit is one on the other side, but two, you have to be the guy who has elevated beyond the, the comfort zone to be able to get the most out of life, because otherwise you're going to miss out on all the experiences that you could have had because you weren't far enough along. And, and I tell these guys who they're like, I don't know what to do with myself. I don't know this, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. I go, just focus on self-development and push forward down the path. And then once you get further down the path, then you'll be able to see where you need to go. But you can't see it from back here because you haven't started yet. So just start that momentum forward. Yeah. And then once you get the testosterone and once you get the momentum in life, it gets addicting. You don't want to get off the path because exactly. now you're rolling along the path. And it's like, it's it's so exciting. Like, I mean, one thing I recently did was I I traded Western society for nature. I went, yeah. I've done enough work with plant medicine to understand yeah. that. And I've done enough work to know that this is what I need more than that. And it's been, you know, it, it wasn't the easiest thing to move to a country where I don't know people and don't speak the language, but sure. it's also been one of the most profound things in leveling up because you have to, you have to like the voice inside your head exactly. when you're on your own, because so many people, they don't like this guy and this guy doesn't like them. And that they lay in bed at night and they hate thinking. They hate that they get tortured by their monologue. And that's one of the, the most difficult things because you have to look within and go, why don't I like myself? And it's because most people don't trust themselves. They exactly. say, I'm going to get up at six and they hit the snooze alarm. And like, you cannot trust anyone in this world anymore because most people are just NPCs who've been psyop. So it's like, you have to trust yourself. And if you can't trust yourself and you're not proud of yourself, then I said this the other day, I'm like, you're fucked. Like, and if, if you're at that point where you're like, I need to start getting back on this path, it's like, look at the areas that you aren't doing the things that you should be doing and start doing them. And then look at all the shit you know that you shouldn't be doing and stop doing that. And you will get so far with that if you apply that with consistency. Bro, beautiful. Let me just throw your stuff up here. I'll just say one other thing to what you were just saying. So you guys, as always, support the amazing people that come on the podcast. Dude, you and I are going to do part two of this, and we'll do it right away because I want to talk. I want to talk more on plant medicine and you know our conscious experiences of what's happened in our life. You know how our paths have evolved and stuff like that. But I'll just say this one thing to all that amazing stuff that you just said. And by the way, dude, this is a fucking insanely profound podcast. I feel like every time now. I don't do anything but amazing things, right? But I'm only bringing amazing people. I'm only bringing resonant light energy beings into my energy field. I, I, I just, I mean, bro, I turned down 90% of people that want to podcast with me anymore because I don't give a shit, right? Like, I mean, what else is there for me to cover when it comes to biohacking? I mean, I, I mean, you and I are world-class biohackers and we didn't even talk about any of that today, right? We talked about what matters, which is again, raising human consciousness, teaching people to love and trust themselves. But to what you just said, the great, if we're here as souls in these physical bodies to evolve and grow spiritually, which is really all we're really here for, right? Let's just break it all down. It's not to be, you know, have a six pack or, a, you know, have 12 Ferraris or, you know, live in a fucking 25,000 square foot house or have G fives or, you know, an army of sluts, you know, at our beck and call. I mean, all of those are material pursuits, which, you know, we all go through phases of our life where materialism is cool. But when we get to a level of spiritual awareness, as I told you, or as I said, as I called you at the beginning of the show, when we're cosmically aware, we realize we're literally here to evolve and grow our souls. And so when you know that, the greatest contrast offers the opportunity for the greatest growth. So all these fat people, all these deranged people physiologically have such an amazing gift. 
that they're being given, but only if they choose to evolve through the contrast. And again, dude, the contrast isn't even negative unless they choose to label it as negative. You know, like you said, you know, going out into nature, right? Like you chose to go to a world slash a country that you don't speak the language. I mean, I did the same thing in Mexico. My wife does speak Spanish, but you know, I mean, in six months, I pretty much, I understand. I can't speak it yet because I don't spend time actually, you know, doing the Duolingo thing if I wanted to, because I'm creating so much, right? I mean, but, but, and that's not an excuse. It's just honesty, but like, I can understand. I, I can sit in a cab and, you know, my wife and the cabbie can go blah, 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 in Spanish and I understand like 80% of it, right? So when in Rome, but point is, is that all of these people that we work with who have labeled themselves this, that, and the other, and don't love and trust themselves, this is your opportunity to go farther than you and I, right? Because again, we've already done the work and now we're kind of walking in the resonant field and that's cool, but the opportunity is through the evolution and breaking through the contrast that has you quote unquote, you know, labeled negative, whatever that is, right? You're fat, you know, you're again, metabolically dysregulated, you have low testosterone, whatever it is, like this is your opportunity to overcome. And so all you have to do is just look at you and me as like Sherpas who are just giving you a little bit of guidance and maybe that slight push. And again, dude, and you know, I, I, I say this to all my people. They're like, man, you know, I, I get this all the time. And I know you do now too. I get messages where they say, you saved my life. I mean, I have a thousand messages in the last five years that says you saved my life. And, and it's a humbling amazing thing to get that. But I always say back to them, I said, dude, I didn't save your life. You did. I just gave you a gentle nudge or I, you allowed me because you were courageous and brave enough to, to choose a better way. You know what I'm saying? And so like, that's what you and I are really doing. I mean, again, just call us like, you know, again, conscious Sherpas or, or cosmic Sherpas where it's like, we're just in the path now of like, what we do is to quote unquote guide. We're not, we're not awaking people. We're guiding people who are choosing to listen to our wisdom or, or choosing to listen to our counsel. Cause I mean, you know, one of my spiritual mentors is a guy by the name of Julian Ponzin. If you haven't watched the podcast that I just did with him, dude, he is like next level. He's like a little bit older than you. I mean, he's an ascended master. His, you know, his statement is, uh, to attempt to awaken another human being is an act of spiritual violence. Because literally people are only going to awaken when they choose to. And so no matter how intelligent, no matter how gifted you are spiritually, if you think it's your personal right to attempt to awaken them, then you are again are committing an act of violence. So again, lead from the front, be able to stop what you're doing and offer assistance, but only when they ask for it. And that's, that's what we're doing, bro. Dude, absolutely. Like, I mean, and I, I like what you said in terms of like, um, you didn't save their life, but you, you gave them the opportunity to save their own life because like, That's right. man, like, I mean, when I had my TBI and I mean, I had vertigo to the point that I couldn't stand for years. And like, if I hadn't been able to do testosterone therapy, I wouldn't have been able to do all the rehab I had to do to get through that because it right. was fucking hard. And like, it's, it's amazing. Like I was speaking to, um, Dr. Adam Hotchkiss and, and I, I mentioned him the other day, you should definitely have a chat with him because we spoke okay. about this that like at the end of our careers, we're, we're going to get to sit back and, and be like, because I believe my purpose in the world is to leave the world a better place than I found it. And, and that's, of course. That's, that's, what, that's what I'm here to do. And for me, like I, I know for a fact, based on how many people have told me, that I've, I've saved a huge amount of lives doing what I've done. And then if you look at like, I, I really think that what we're going to look back in, in 10 or 20 years and look at the ripple effect of you writing that first fucking TRT book that I, I remember like, you weren't going to put it out. And then I think like Nelson told you, he was like, yeah, no, Nelson, dude, you got to put Nelson it out. Like, it. And by the way, dude, I don't even talk to it, Nelson anymore. And Nelson and I are completely distant and I love the guy. You know, I mean, it's not my choice. I mean, you know, he's on his own path, and but I, I have no ill will towards him, but that's just kind of how the world works. Like people come into your life, just like you and I have now come into each other's life. And they, and when they do, you value them for that time. And even if they leave yeah. or, you know, it breaks off or whatever, it doesn't matter because if you look at that as the opportunity that they gave you to grow and evolve, which clearly he did, just as you and I are growing and evolving from each other, there's no ill will. You don't harbor negative thoughts or energy towards it. It was just like, wow, I'm so grateful for that opportunity. Look what mm -hmm. I learned from that. But the, the, yeah, absolutely, man. And like when you, that, that, that shows when you, when you've ascended kind of beyond uh, remorse towards people, because you can see right. people as necessary learning experiences or, or people that you share with, and then it might've ended a certain way, but you know, 
you, you got to experience, you know, good things. But I like to look at like, if we look at your book and then look at like everything that came from that, yes. I mean, and then all the ripple that that's going to have moving forward. Like that was like, I mean, such a huge catalyst for like where this whole industry has gone. And it's, um, it, it's going to be amazing to look back, you know, when we finish up our careers doing this to be like, what a profound, amazing impact we had. Like I had a, I had a client the other day, he, um, he drove down from, from Latvia. Um, to have dinner with me because you know working you know sa- saved his life and then you know brought his wife and his his wife was like you know we'd been married for x amount of years and things have gotten terrible and now things are amazing and you know just and then so you know that impacted his family's life and I mean if you look at like just the the trajectory that these these things have I mean it's such amazing work to do with people especially when it's you know it, it's it's teaching them to master themselves and it, it's teaching them exactly. to go hey like you know, you may not be doing well right now and that's okay, but it's also not okay to accept that and continue it. And this is, this is how you can fix it. And I like what you said about, you know, if someone's overweight and, and, and they're, they're not doing well, it's like, you have the opportunity to see what you are made of. Like I am so grateful for having to do two years of rehab because the skills I got from doing that now, now I often say that like, it feels like I finished like the main game of life. And now I'm just playing the side missions because I, I went through the hard thing. Like everything feels so much subjectively easier because of the hardship I got to face. And that's the cure to this, what, what Carl Jung refers to as neurosis, which is where people become softened because they haven't gone through anything hard. So right. everything is too hard. And it's, like if, it, and it's like, if, if you've got, you know, 20, 30 kilos of body fat to lose, like you get to go to war with yourself. Like you get to swing back at life. Exactly. And you get to be you get to be the guy who people thought wouldn't be able to do what you did. And like exactly right. you come out the other side of that and like not only do you command so much more respect from your peers, but you get to have all the skills that you got from going through that, and then you get to go and fuck shit up in life. And that's the that's the amazing thing. Amazing, bro. I mean, we I could just talk to you forever. I mean, I want to bring you on the so so what I'm gonna do is uh and the guys have already agreed, like, you know, we're gonna pick individual personalities to bring on the show. So, you know, not a lot of guys get an invite, you get an invite a hundred percent. Uh I'm definitely bringing on Rick Collins. You know, we're gonna talk about the legal the legalities. I mean, Rick and I are such old friends. I mean, I was actually joking with him the other day. I was like, bro, you have an encyclopedic knowledge of things, but I'm gonna I'm going to put you to the test. I'm like, do you remember when you sent me the white paper back in 2011, Jay, on your book or 2012 on your book? Of course I do. He fucking read my mind. He didn't even know what I was going to say. But like, that's the connection that he and I have. Like I was literally a nobody and I sent him a message in an email because, you know, I knew him from the bodybuilding world. I was like, hey, you know, if a guy like me with no, you know, credentials or licensed, you know, formal medical background wrote a book on TRT, would I be at risk? And he was very honest with me and he wrote me back the same fucking day. He was like, hey, your paper is amazing. You know, I'll be honest with you. But yeah, there's always risk and blah, blah, blah. And it's, you know, if Senator gets a bug up their ass for you, you know, you're probably paying me a couple hundred grand to keep you out. So I was like, you know what, man, I got a successful real estate career. I'm not writing a book. And then thankfully Nelson came along. But I mean, yes, well, everything you just said, you know, we're, we are, I mean, bro, we're just Sherpas now. Yes, we have our own internal demons and we have to deal with our own personal lives and, you know, our relationships with our loved ones and stuff like that. And that never ends. And as you know, dude, people like us that are as cosmically aware as us, you know, we chose a life that would allow us to evolve and grow at such a magnitude that it's tough. Our personal, usually the people that are closest to us are asleep. And that's just the choice that we made, right? Like, I mean, guys like me and you, bro, like we have nobody usually in our family that's awake. It's because again, that's what we chose. I I fought with my mom and dad. My mom, God rest her soul, just literally died in March. She was, you know, morbidly obese. I'm, I'm very open about that story. So I watched obesity destroy my mom. And again, my mom had layers of trauma that she could never overcome. And I, you know, God rest her soul right now. I hope that she made it out and that she's not, you know, in the nether zones of like people that are in total fear. Cause my mom was in total fear consciousness. She might've thought she was going to hell, bro. I mean, honestly, no spiritual awareness, but the ultimate thing is I would sit there, you know, cause I read, uh, you know, Eckhart Tolle's the power of now back in like 2014. And remember he asked you to write a letter to your parents, forgiving them and honoring them and saying, I love you. And there's no parenting guidebook, but thank you. Right now people for, for, for people like me, my parents were, you know, no spiritual awareness, Catholics, but no, no clue. They didn't even like respond to me for like eight months. And then I remember one day texting them. I was like, Hey, did you guys ever get my letter? 
And they both wrote, wrote back because I would text them together on their cell phones in their own weird ways. But like, dude, your parents, the, the reason I just told you the story is that all this thinking that I did of like, what was the reason that I chose my dad? Because I have had nothing but a hellish relationship with him my whole life. It's always been just like, I say black, he says white. And then bro, it hit me. I chose him to evolve in the greatest possible way because I, I knew he would be my internal uh, protagonist. He would always be the antithesis or the antithesis. And so it, like, it was like this like, whoa, you know, this like welling up of like, oh my God. That's why I chose him because he prevented, he presented the greatest opportunity for growth and advancement. He's a super intellectual, spiritually bereft, uh, constant, you know, fighter, you know, will never agree with you. I mean, like all my family, right. They'll all be like, has dad ever agreed with a single person that went against his opinion or attitudes in his life? No. Has he ever even like diplomatically agreed that another person's point of view would be okay or, you know, just as productive, you know, again, different ways to skin a cat. No. So it hit me, bro. Like my dad and I, I chose him as my dad because like he allowed me the greatest opportunity for growth and evolution. But it took me 47 fucking years of living in this third dimensional skin suit to figure it out. And so it's like, you know, I say to people when I'm coaching them who have problems with their parents or their kids or, you know, whatever it is, I'm like, look, dude, they're your greatest teacher, but only if you allow them to teach you. And if you're in resistance to their style or their attitude or whatever it is they do to you that fucks you and pisses you off, that's your problem. Dude, you're either in flow or you're in resistance. Hawkins' statement, which I've modified, you know, true truth is everything is happening divinely as it's intended. And I added always and in all ways. So if you're in resistance to that statement, that's on you, motherfucker. Everything is happening exactly as it's intended. Kids are being, you know, uh, sex trafficked, harvested for adrenochrome, eaten by reptilians, whatever it is, it's all happening as it's divinely intended. If you do not believe that, it's your resistance to that statement. I mean, again, that bothers people and that pisses people off. But when you get to a state of flow in your life, you accept that because you realize that God is bigger than us. Bro, you know that we're not even anything more than the will and intention of the divine mind. And these, like you said, projected bodies. <laughs> oh, dude, absolutely. And one of the most important things that, and again, I, I can't speak for women. I don't coach women. I don't understand women, but I understand men. And one of the most important things that all men have to go through at some point in their in their journey into adulthood, which I think happens at about thirty, is that you have to forgive your parents for not being exactly, perfect. Dude. And it's like if you're not if you're not in forgiveness, you're in resentment. And like one of the most totally. profound experiences I had was after an ayahuasca ceremony. And the, the ultimate rule is you're not allowed to contact the outside world. And I said, everyone, I'm calling my mom and I don't give a fuck. And I called my mom and it must have been like 3 a.m. for her. And she was like, is everything OK? And I'm like, mom, I love you and thank you for everything. And I, I miss you so much. And we and I, I, I was like, you don't have to say anything because right. she, she's not a, she's not a, an open, chatty person. And I'm like, I'm just going to I'm just going to speak. And, you know, she didn't want kids, but she was the best mom in the world. And she wanted to be a CEO. And she did both. And she did both like an absolute gangster. And like it was it was amazing for me to say, Hey, like all this stuff that you did as a kid that I took for granted because I was a kid and I didn't understand. Now I can see it as an adult. And I want to thank you and honor for that. and honor you for that because you, you know, you're the best mom in the world and you did the, the best possible job you can. And that was one of the most profound conversations of my life. And everyone in the room overheard it. And I went back in and everyone's like, can I call my mom too? And I was like, absolutely. So I had this room full of dudes. Everyone's calling their mom. Um, and, and it, it's, it's such a, it's such an important thing to get to, to understand that like, you know, and I, I know that a whole bunch of people's parents do some fucked up shit and maybe, yeah, you know, that, that's course. very different. But the, the in the general stuff, like, it's so important that we go back to when we were a child and understand and go, hey, our parents were just people working this out for the Absolutely. first time and they weren't superheroes. Absolutely. And like, and if we can get to the point where we realize that we're still holding on to resentment from the yes. child mind who didn't understand yes. and we can, we can speak and let that go and communicate. That's when you can extend the relationship with your parents into right. like, now you are like that. It, it's, it's phenomenal. And that's like one of the most important things I ever did with my parents. And for anyone who's, you know, still kind of a bit, got a bit of animosity and distance with their parents. Like it's better to do it when they're still with us. than, than 100%. And, and, and bro, honestly, like, 
First off, man, I love and appreciate you, man. I want you to know that. This has been such an amazing, profound podcast. It seems like it'll never end. I mean, I could talk to you forever. I will have you back on part two soon, and we will definitely do a very deep plant medicine conversation that really needs to happen. Uh, Because I know you're on the exact same wavelength as me uh, in in that. Um, And not many people are, you know, to our credit. You know, a lot of people do plant medicine, bro, and their brain, they disassociate because they're in fear. Mm. You cannot do plant medicine in a horrific fear state because, again, as you know, it's an amplifier. But, again, we'll talk about that at another time. But, um, like I said, I mean, I literally talked to you forever. But, you know, I I made my peace with my mom before she died. And Mm. I made my, I mean, I was much more closer to my mom at various points in my life because I really wanted her to leave my dad. And I, you know, I encouraged her. I told her I was willing to leave my job when I was a wage slave and get her back into health and all that. I mean, I loved my mom, but like my mom, you know, she had her own demons and, you know, everyone does. When you become obese, you got demons to deal with and some people just can't deal with them. And whatever it is, it is what it is. But uh, I'm glad you said what you said because I made my peace with my mom. Uh, and that is true. You definitely want to communicate them when, with them. You can communicate with them when they're in the energy life or the afterlife or whatever you want to call it, the in-between. But uh, it's obviously better and physical to to have that. Bro, like I said, man, I appreciate you. I love you. This is absolutely profound. Um, I put both your websites and, of course, the Instagram up. Is there anywhere else you want to have people go to you before we end this? No, nah, man, that, that, that's the places. I mean, I, I just I put up a whole bunch of writing on Instagram that people can check out, a whole yep. bunch of stuff on you know consciousness and mindfulness and, and everything in between. But no, man, thank you so much for having me on again. It's um, it's a very it's a very surreal thing for me. Like I I, I was I remember I was going to tell you this. I reckon that there was a good period of my life where I could have quoted word for word the introduction to your fucking podcast. That's like awesome. I, I listened to that shit every single day to and from work when i was working out my own shit so awesome. to be on here at the at the other end of my journey and, and to share this with you is is um is surreal man it, it's absolutely awesome and as i said like i often tell people like the the number one thing i learned from about trt is that jay campbell's right about everything and you've got to go back and listen to all this stuff about inflammation and, and metabolic syndrome and all that shit because like <laughs> that stuff has aged so fuck like so, heaps of stuff in trt has not aged well but like that stuff on like inflammation and metabolic issues, yeah. fucking up TRT and like estrogenic side effects being inflammatory issues from a fucked up metabolism. Like yep. that is like, I, I didn't understand that intrinsically when I heard it, but now it's like, you see it. Like when you work with guys full time day to day, it's all you see. So if anyone, like if my guys are listening to this, like you got to go check out Jay's stuff on, on all that kind of thing, because that's what, you know, led me down the path of doing this. And, yeah, man, it's awesome to, to be here and connect with you and, and can't wait to you know, talk more. Appreciate you, brother. That's awesome. I'm honored, received, reflected back. So guys and gals and all the amazing people that watch these podcasts, uh, please go and support Dave. Go to his Instagram. It's basically I am Dave Lee. And of course, his website is advancedfundamentalhealth.com. And remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see all of you guys very soon.